Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I am going to make sure there is enough clearance all the way around the engine on the engine bay of the Alferrari. Guys, welcome back. And um, many of you watched last week uh, where I went through and uh, I had a little bit of a win on overheating problems, but a bit of a loss as well. And um, uh, I also removed the engine and got it uh, out of the car to get ready to make some clearance so that uh, I have at least 10 millimeters everywhere around the edge of the engine. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above, uh, like always, so you can catch up with last week. And um, think about subscribing, liking, commenting, it all helps, uh, it really is good. On my idling, there were lots of uh, different suggestions. The main one coming through was vacuum leak. And um, I, sort of thinking about the engine and there's not a lot of places where it can leak, but I had a quick look around. So uh, basically the only way that uh, air is gonna get into the engine is either through the throttle bodies or uh, into this plenum here somewhere. Now I have these vacuum lines on the front. They were connected up. And then coming around to the back, um, there's an old vacuum port there that's blocked up. And looky see, that one is open. I don't remember if I removed the bolt or whether it's uh, made its way loose from the vibrations. I think I might have removed it, I can't remember. But uh, either way, I reckon that is probably my issue is, uh, yeah, it has got a uh, very high idle and uh, uh, that is quite a vacuum leak. Now on the overheating, I had heaps of suggestions. One of the most common ones was uh, that uh, I need to fix the idle first because sitting at 2300 RPM uh, is, gonna be making it heat up way more than it needs to, but um, it should still be able to cool at that. I want a car that can be able to be stuck in traffic on a 40 degree day, have the aircon going, and still be comfortable that the car is not overheating. I don't find that an unreasonable uh, thing. So uh, I went back and I had a look at my fans, and as I mentioned, I've got these basic Davies Craig fans. Um, they're probably fine for some things, but the fan blade design, as you can see, is just a basic rectangle. I've actually got a couple of these fans, these spool fans. Uh, these are 10 inch, whereas the ones I can fit on the car are nine. Uh, these are actually four underneath at the back for the air conditioning condensers. But um, you can just see the blade design is a much more efficient, that'll, um, just flow better and uh, I am still, either way, I think I'm going to get one 14 inch fan that I think can actually um, pull about double the CFM of what these fans are. But pulling all that air is one thing, but it needs to be able to get through the engine bay. And that's where I had more of a look and didn't actually notice, this is the first time I had the bash plate on the car. And uh, let me show you in the engine bay now and uh, you'll be able to see the issue. All right, so you can see the bash plate in the car here. Uh, so the radiator sits in the front here. Uh, we have the subframe. Basically, there is almost no gap. There's less than 10 millimeter gap, but around the engine, anywhere around here. So there is a massive block blockade of the engine. So even though it's nice and open at the back there, the air can't really get to there. Uh, there is, as you see, it, it coming from the top, it can't really get down, and uh, from the bottom, it can't get down. So it can't really get past the, uh, the center of the car. And with this uh, bash plate in here, the only other place normally would be going straight down. This side is almost totally blocked with the alternator. And down here is the, uh, the water pump and everything. So there's only these tiny little gaps on either side for the air to get out around the stuff that's already stuffed in those places. So um, I think the bash plate is actually a, uh, a, the bulk of my issue is if I got rid of that, there'd be space for the air to go straight down out and under the car um, that there cu currently isn't. So I designed the bash plate to be able to save the, uh, the, the front, sort of the sump of the engine. The thing is, is 
to be honest, it's not really that vulnerable in this car. I don't really need it. Uh, the factory alpha sump actually sat much lower than what the Ferrari one does. It actually sat down in front of that uh, cross member and forward with no bash plate. There were optional bash plates, but a lot of them don't have it. And they've got a really big um, cast aluminum fin sump that can uh, get damaged if uh, something hits it hard. Um, in this case, the, the engine actually sits slightly back from where that sump on the Alpha does, and it's between the front edge of the front wheels, so basically it's never gonna hit something on, a, on a, like a, any straight dip. It would only be something that's really heavily humped in the middle, straight between the two wheels that's actually going to do any damage. So I can, for starters, when I put it back together again, I'm gonna try running without it, but uh, I can also, uh, add a bunch of holes into it. So I can I can potentially put it back and just uh, make it so that it can actually breathe instead of being a complete blockage there. I think with a stronger fan, uh, it may even work with these fans, but I think just a swap out for one stronger, better flowing fan and having that, uh, that space there, I think that will help a lot of it. If then I have to go further, then I can start looking at the, um, um, you know, louvers in the bonnet vent or, or something like that. Um, you know, I'd do it in the um, the Perspex, like many suggested, like the Ferrari F40 or something like that. Uh, I prefer not to if I can avoid it um, because I can't make them drop down like the uh, the F40 has the sort of uh, drop down vents. There's no space with the, uh, uh, the the plenums. I can't go down in the bonnet anymore, so they'd have to stick up. And I just, I don't like the, the idea of that. They're going to be visible on the top and not really uh, the, uh, the best aesthetic choice. Um, but we will if we have to. So more to come on that. But for now, let's get into the engine bay and start making some space. All right, so um, I can, I've sort of marked a few places here. So I'm going to cut out a curve in this section here and uh, and make a channel running across this way, all nicely reinforced and, uh, and just give a little bit more space in this area here. Uh, underneath these mounts, these mounts I've uh, sort of made go straight down. I think they need to have a channel under here because there's a header that sort of fits under there. Give it just plenty more space, more than it needs. Uh, on this other side, similar sort of thing. There's gonna be a channel running through here, like a curved channel, and another curved channel running through the bottom here. There's plenty of room to cut that out and actually make it stronger than it currently is so um, we can get the clearance we need for getting the engine in. So to start with, I just use the cutting disc on the grinding wheel and just start trying to make the clearance that I need. It's really difficult to get into these tight areas, so using a screwdriver and just cut and flick out the bits as I go. It was about this time I thought I should do a little bit better job of covering up the body of the car, so uh, I got a bunch of sheets out and taped everything into place before I continued. And now, using the flap disc, I just go through and smooth out my openings. And then it's the same again on the passenger side. It was really good to see how difficult it was to cut into these engine mount brackets and get into this area. It really makes me feel good about the level of reinforcement I put in here and uh, I'm only going to be adding extra to it. All right, so you can see here what I've done. Uh, cut out a groove there, which I can put a nice curved piece of three mil plate in. This is only two mil, I'll do that also in three mil just to make sure it's super strong. But before I fill that in, I need to cut off this engine mount and I wanna move it back, which means doing the same on the engine mount on the engine. All right, so I've just been making a plan on how to move that engine mount. I don't wanna move it far because that's going to upset all sorts of things that I've got. Like I mentioned, there's not much room around the engine, so I don't wanna move an engine mount 
um, very far at all. So basically what I'm going to do is put the engine back in, mark the, uh, the, the engine in physical space so when I can put it back in with one engine mount missing, put it in the exact same spot so the new engine mount location keeps everything where it's supposed to be. And I know you guys love to see it, so here is engine in and engine out again. All right, well now with the engine in, you can see that there is a ton of room around that header up there. Um, if we go further around and have a look, um, before uh, this here was really close, uh, now I can fit my finger all the way through there. Like it's uh, plenty of space all the way around. So that's what I was looking for. And it's much easier to do that with the engine out, but uh, we still have the, uh, the engine mount that's tight. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna mark some places on the engine itself so that uh, I know exactly where it sits, height and uh, everything, so I don't mess up anything else. And uh, then we can take it out, cut the engine mount off and re-weld it on further back. So before I cut up this engine mount, I wanted to take a bunch of measurements to sort of get a bit of a baseline of where I'm at. I then cut up the engine mount, but I'm still not entirely sure of how I'm going to proceed. In the end, I thought the best thing to do would be to make a jig welding it to my bench. So what I needed to do is move this engine mount down five millimeters and back 10 millimeters. And uh, I set this jig up and made it all up and uh, I was just about to do it and then realized that uh, I was actually going the wrong direction uh, by moving the base plate is what I was gonna move. It's hard to see it here, it's probably hard to work it out, but uh, um, this setup was gonna move it the wrong direction. I wanna actually move it the other way and uh, yeah, so let's remake this jig so I can move the, uh, the piece where I need it. So I remade my jig so that I can move the base plate and keep the cotton reel in the same position. I cut off the old mount off of the cotton reel and then mounted it back into my jig. Then I measured and moved the base plate exactly five mil up and 10 mil over, which is exactly the distance I need, and then made a new spacer to mount it to the base plate. Then with it tacked in place, I mounted it back onto the engine with also the body side bracket bolted up and put the engine back in place, making sure I got it exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, so I modified that engine mount on the bench to roughly the dimensions I want. Now I put the engine back in the car. I've lined it back up with my marks. I'm gonna get underneath um, and, uh, and tack on the mount itself to the body. So then I can unbolt it, take the engine out and weld everything up in the position I want. And uh, the engine should still be in the same location, but with more clearance around that engine mount. And with lying in really comfortable positions under the car and also lying in my oil-soaked kitty litter, I use the MIG to tack in the engine mounts. And yes, as a firefighter, I know how smart that is. All right, I got some absolutely horrible tacks onto the uh, engine mount, but it's in the right spot. So now I can weld it up uh, and know it's where it needs to be. Now it's back to the old fashioned CAD, cardboard aided design to mark out my spots with the dirty finger method, pushing it into the hole and rubbing your finger around the edge. Then transferring those shapes onto my three mil steel plate, cutting them out and tidying them up. And then stick them in the vise and bash them into shape to get the curves that I want. And then it's just a matter of fine tuning to get them sit perfectly in position. All right, I've dragged the TIG welder across the room and set up in the engine bay. 
um, I've got my first pieces cut out. So uh, let's give them a coat of weld through primer and uh, then start welding it all up. So for permanently welding them in, I'm using my weld class TIG and I, I really like the TIG for this stuff. It's so much cleaner, you don't have welding spatter and you can really take your time and get a nice neat application without adding too much excess material. Alright, so uh, I welded up my engine mounts and um, it's not the prettiest, but I'm getting uh, a little bit better. I made a revelation actually uh, today doing this welding. If I actually wear my <laughs> reading glasses, which uh, I always had perfect vision, um, but uh, many people in their 40s will know that you suddenly your eyesight starts to uh, taper off. And uh, yeah, particularly in low light, which is what the, uh, the shield sort of gives me and uh, close up. Um, yeah, putting some glasses on under the uh, welding helmet is a whole revelation. I can see what I'm doing. I wonder why my welding is so bad. That's one little part of it. But anyway, um, yes, that uh, is working well, but we have my uh, engine mount now welded up. There is a massive gap uh, before the bolt used to come through and be within 10 millimeters of the, uh, the tab that mounted on the engine, and that was too close. Uh, now, there's not gonna be that issue. Um, there is actually a stud on the engine so that I can slide a nut in. It is a real pain to do this up, but it was before anyway. So um, let's put the bushings back into this and uh, get back into finishing off the welding in the engine bay itself. All right, it's not pretty, but my engine mounts are in. Um, I have made up all my big heavy duty three mil plates, all TIG welded in. Uh, I scalloped out the uh, the lower edge of this mount because this has got a, uh, a pivot ball mount in there. So this all will make plenty of room now for the headers. Uh, same on the other side, plenty of room. Uh, it is uh, going to do the job. All right, this engine bay is a complete nightmare and I'll hopefully be able to clean it up and make it all nice and neat. But uh, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little bit more um, ventilation down here. Now, the trouble is, is that all this side is like triple wall frame rails. So there's no easy way to make vents going through here. I might be able to open this triangle up if I really need to later, but it's a bit of a pain, so I'm gonna sort of avoid it. There's brake lines behind there and stuff like that. So there's no real easy way to vent more out from there. Obviously, like I mentioned, without the uh, bash plate on, there should be a fair bit of ventilation, but I'm gonna add a bit more by opening up these little uh, slots here. There's one there and a little bit more over on this side here. All right, that was a lot of work. Uh, so much work, so much cutting and grinding, messy work. Uh, moving things around and getting the space that I need. But I'm confident now uh, that I can put the engine back in and it's gonna have the 10 millimeters everywhere around the engine that it should have had in the first place. But uh, um, everything's so tight and it's just, is a challenge on, on this sort of job. But uh, I am happy that uh, I think we're there. So uh, that's all the time I have this week. I will have to get back and, uh, and paint this all and tidy it all up and put in some more heat tape and things like that next week. So uh, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. In 2017, Ferrari won the LMGTD Pro Class drivers and constructors titles and as a tribute built the 488 Pista Pilotti Ferrari. Taking a lot of the technical and aerodynamic solutions from the race cars and sporting an Italian flag livery and the number 51 as a tribute. Another version of the 488 was built to celebrate 50 years of Ferrari in Japan with the J50. This had a custom body designed in Maranello's special project department and only 10 examples were built. 
a couple of one-off track only cars were built. The PADC removed the tail lights and the headlights completely and had large aero components. The KC23 was built on a 488 GT3 Evo with a completely redesigned body and used those butterfly doors from La Ferrari. All right, uh, sorry about all the noise in the background. There's some builders just down the street, uh, but um, we are getting there. I mean, that was a whole bunch of cutting and welding and grinding and mess that I now have to clean up next week and get it all nice and tidy and then put the engine back in, get it running again and all that sort of stuff. Oh, uh, and the driveway will be tidied up too for people to comment on the driveway. Yes, the driveway is, there's, there's stuff working in the backgrounds for that. Many people have- uh, And we are harvesting our beautiful crop of weeds. Mm, we call it our weed garden. But in any case, uh, the, the car is getting ready and has to be ready for uh, festival speed in Canberra uh, in about two weeks time. So uh, I am really looking forward to that and uh, getting to stretch the Alfaro's legs a bit, which should be fun. Getting to meet some people. Yeah, hopefully like a bunch of you will come and uh, join us down there. Mm. So um, like, subscribe, help Jeff out on Patreon. Um, want to see the videos a day early and um, ad free. Ad free, thank you. And support him and his vehicular endeavors. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, join us there and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye guys. See you guys. And as a tribute, decided to build the 488 Pil it. Pista, Pista Pilotti. It was built to celebrate 50 years of Ferrari in Japan with the J80. Or maybe J50 because it's 50 years. I was thinking as I read it, that would make more sense, but I just thought I had 80. You just went with it. <laughs> Yes. Now that smashed it. Is that okay? Is that it? Yep. Yep, done. That's it. Smashed done. it. Smashed it.